And turn your attention to the uh, messenger where most of your announcements will be found. Um, one announcement, there's a plastic container on the white table outside when you're walking out, and it's got Legos in it. On the Legos is the name of one of our children in Sunday school and youth, and we are asking people to take a Lego and pray for that child um, during Lent, and uh, recommend praying for this, our kids every day, but... Uh, during Lent, we especially invite you to take one child's name and pray for them specifically. So please take. There's still Legos left. I'm looking out the window, and there's still some names and some children yet to be prayed for. So please take one. I had a bunch of people announcing at last service. Are any of them here? Okay. Um... Looking through this, I think you can find most of the announcements here, and nothing comes to my mind to bring up right away, so with that, uh, I'll pray. Good and gracious God, we welcome your presence among us, and we gather here to be present with you, to lay down and lighten our load to feel the grace of your good news in our lives and to be renewed and sent forth uh, to share that spirit with others. In Jesus' name, amen. See you in the gratefulness that she's yesterday. 
Let us confess our faith, our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, forgive us. Our will is handcuffed to sin, and we cannot free ourselves. We have spoken when we should have kept quiet. We were silent when we should have said something. We acted when we knew better. We were still when we know we should have moved. For the wrong we have done, for the good we have failed to do, have mercy on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the eighth chapter. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind on, not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake, for the sake of the gospel, will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of them, the Son of Man, will, be not, will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the an holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please take the time to share the peace with one another.
I'll invite the kids to come forward. So, I have a book here called My Prayer Journal, and it's for, um, like, kind of how to pray, because sometimes you don't always know what to say or do, and it says in, in the book of Romans, we are very weak, but the Spirit helps us with our weakness. We do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself speaks to God for us, even begs God for us. God can see what is in people's hearts. So sometimes when um, you don't know what to say, um, but you feel like you've got to pray, because maybe you made a big mistake, and you're wondering, does God still love me when I mess up? And I don't know. Um, know that even just coming with the desire to pray, um, the Spirit knows your words. And it may come out to the Spirit sounding like this. Dear God, I'm sad and glad at the same time. Does that make sense? My heart hurts to know I'm disappointed you, but I'm happy to know that you love me no matter how many times I make mistakes. This is a great blessing. And because you'll never give up on me, I won't give up on me either. And I'll try to do better next time. So God never gives up on you. Don't give up on you either. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, you are my God, and I want to please you. I've done some things that are wrong. You know my heart. Hear my heart. I'm sorry. Amen. Years ago, I was walking in a park on my way to go see a church softball game. I didn't know the park very well. It was not well lit. And I came across some uneven sidewalk, and I tripped, and I stumbled, and I did one of those stumbling falls where you don't fall, you just keep moving. And finally, I hit a brick wall with my face. And that was how I finally stopped. I looked around. I saw there were like four young men who had seen the whole incident, but they didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I just kind of wobbled out of the park and went back to my car. And when I turned on my car engine, what was playing was a song by DC Talk, which is a Christian contemporary band. And the song is called, uh, What If I Stumble? And it just made me laugh and think, oh my gosh, thank you, God. Um, but the chorus of that song is something, um, well, definitely has significant meaning to me now because <laughs> I lived it physically, um, but it's speaking about your faith as well. What if I stumble? What if I fall? What if I lose my step and I make fools of us all? Will the love continue when my walk becomes a crawl? What if I stumble? What if I fall? When our faith walk becomes a crawl, what sort of witness do we have? When we fail to know and follow God's will, when we feel far away from God, and we want to give up when we feel that we've been hit by a brick wall of faith, when we feel beaten down by disappointing behavior in Christians, when we feel we are stumbling. What if someone sees this? What will they think? What if they see our fear and our doubt and our falling? 
In the gospel today, it speaks about being a witness. And the word martyr, that's what it means, to be a witness. To be a martyr for the faith means to be a witness, to tell the story and share what you have experienced of God's grace and good news in your own lives. And that there is good news within our stumbling and our falling. That God doesn't want us to beat ourselves up, nor does God want us to beat others up for their mistakes. One of the great inheritance that we receive in um, the Lutheran faith is a theology of being simultaneously saints and sinners. Being a saint isn't about what you do or you don't do. It's about who you are in relationship with God. And that's also true about being a sinner. The Lutheran Confessions, which is a, a set of statements and writings that clarify our beliefs and, and theology and kind of what would uh, put you as, this is Lutheran. <laughs> um, it defines sin as self-centered failure to trust God. Self-centered failure to trust God. Turning an inward upon oneself um, and failing to trust God. Martin Luther describes the Christian as simultaneously saint and sinner. And that's a both-and approach to theology that is distinctly Lutheran. We do like to answer yes and to a lot of questions. which can be very frustrating when you want the answer. Because our answers tend to be, yeah, and this. Um, so it's a both-and understanding. Yes, you are a saint, and you're a sinner. Luther redefined saint. Redefined saint as the forgiven sinner. We are called saints not because we change into something different, something better, but because of our relationship with God. It changes us as a result of God's grace. Martin Luther said the saints are sinners too, but they are forgiven and absolved. It's easy to rely on ourselves, especially when we got this little insurance policy of, you know, in case we mess up, oh, we're forgiven, we're all, all okay. But even on our best days, what matters most is not what I do or what I don't do, but that Jesus died for us. I've seen a t-shirt and it says, Saint, uh, Saint is what you see when you're looking at my t-shirt. But when I look down and see what's written across my chest, it says, Sinner. I love that t-shirt. That encapsulates that we are saintly sinners and sinning saints. Not to forget either. That is our stumbling witness that we share. And not just us. There's lots of saintly sinners in the Bible. Abraham's one of them. He was a man of great faith, and yet he was so afraid of the authorities and every little uh, city and country that he came to that he would lie about his wife Sarah being his wife. He nearly lost her to King's harem. And he didn't make that mistake once. He didn't make that mistake twice. He made that mistake. He did this three times. He lied. And he did it to save his own neck. Yet God was faithful and helped him despite his lying. And evidently Sarah was too. First and second Samuel. They tell the story of the great King David and his children 
The stories of David parallel so many of the great uh, stories that you read in history of powerful figures, of families possessing great power, and how deceit and manipulation and corruption caused great pain. And at the same time, that great power was often used to do great good. Matthew 1, it lists that the ancestry of Jesus, and it includes a few women in the list, very unusual women to be mentioned, and they are the ones who are named. Rahab, she was a prostitute who helped Joshua and Caleb sneak out of Jericho. Tamar seduced her father-in-law so that she could become pregnant. Ruth was a foreigner to Israel, and Bathsheba was the woman David seduced, and Mary was a teen mother pregnant outside of marriage. You add to this human family system of saintly sinners and sinning saints, our hero of the story that I just read from the gospel, Peter, Peter was a born leader who struggled. He struggled to be the follower that Jesus was modeling him to be. No sooner does Peter claim that Jesus is Christ, that within moments of the same breath, he is telling Jesus that he can't go where Jesus is going. And the perfect Christ doesn't rise from the dead because a perfect Christ would never die. Peter is the rock on which my church was built on. Stumbling Peter, which often crumbles and must be rebuilt. We are among a group of imperfect people who have been made part of the body of Christ, who are sustained and perfected and guided by the Spirit. We have been given a great gift. At any time and in any place, we may ask God to forgive what separates us from God, or even more so, what separates us from each other. such as the words that come from our mouths. Same words, same mouths that can be used to praise God may also be a knife to cut others down. The church unites this mess of simultaneous saints and sinners into a community that bears the wounds of sin and abuse. For the church to think it is immune to sin, that it is somehow immune to the world in which we live, is a belief that causes us to be myopic in our vision, especially our own vision of our sin. But as worshiping communities, we confess the truth truth of our unloving words, thoughts, and deeds, of our practice of the many isms. We hear, feel, and taste the mercy and forgiveness of God's love in the words of forgiveness, in the waters of baptism, in the receiving of the body and blood of Christ, and in the sharing of the peace. The church is not a place for arrogance but a sanctuary. The church is a sanctuary for stumbling sinners who occasionally hit brick walls. So what if I stumble? What if I fall? I hear you whispering my name. You say to me that my love for you will never change. Never change? What if I stumble? What if I fall? You are my comfort. 
you are my God. Amen. rise and sing as we share our tithes and offerings.
Let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church. Make us bold to proclaim your love. Give us courage to carry the cross that confronts us each day and to follow Christ. Strengthen pastors, bishops, deacons, and all ministers in your name. We pray for our world. We pray for the flowing streams in the still waters, urban parks, wilderness reserves, for pastures and forests, that we may have reverence for the earth as your creation and our very fragile home. We pray for the nations. Teach us to honor our common humanity within diversity. Turn enemies into friends. Lead us away from hatred and fear and misunderstanding. Show our hearts the way to peace and fill us with compassion. We pray for those in need, for people who are struggling and whom we fail to acknowledge. For those who leave their homes and families to search for safety and employment. For those who grieve and who are ill. We lift up Jackie Bruner, Larry Stilwell, Roberta Byman, for Morris, James, Vera Kimsey, and Greg McKinley. For the survivors and the fighters of the Florida school shooting. We lift up prayers of thanksgiving for Bill Stoner, Becky Smith, Helen Jean Christensen, and Valerie Brown. We pray for this gathering, for those who prepare this space for worship for ministers of fellowship and hospitality, and for our musicians, for those preparing for baptism or confirmation, for all who provide care and support to those who are homebound, and to our younger children in nursery. We remember this Thanksgiving with Thanksgiving, those who have gone before us in faith, especially Deaconess Elizabeth Fetty, Bring them to the fullness of their inheritance in Christ, into eternal joy with life with you. All this, O oh God, we lift up. We lift up our prayers through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Whenever we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do so remembering Christ died, Christ risen, and Christ shall come again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The meal is prepared, and all are welcome to receive this meal of forgiveness. We will commune along the railings. You may stand or kneel as you uh, feel fit, and you will receive the bread, and then either dark liquid, which is wine, or light liquid, which is grape juice, and there are gluten-free elements available. Just let your server know. Come, let us eat.
invite you to stand and receive the blessing, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. May the Lord... I do that every time. <laughs> oh, the grace and peace of God go with you and shine upon you in your days. Amen. Amen.